Well, to begin with, uh, we're very, very excited. Uh, this doesn't quite answer that question about having a TV game uh, to begin with. I think, uh, you know, Fort Lewis College, the city, our program, we really need that shot in the arm and uh, present ourselves to the to the rest of the country and represent the RMAC, I think, is huge for us. But um, our expectations and our goals are really no different than they uh, have in all of my career as coaching. You know, when we try to take this to the kids, you know, number one thing is for us to send our, our seniors out as winners. Uh, that's always goal number one, wherever I've been. Uh, the second goal would be, of course, you know, to end up uh, winning the league championship. We play for a championship, we want to win the league. And the third one to be uh, play for a national championship. So those things haven't changed, and uh, we've just got to accomplish some of those goals this year where we uh, didn't get that done last year. Well, I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. They're going to come in, and they're used to doing this, and they're used to going to tons of different programs, and they'll bring in lights. They'll put up the lights. Um, I know at Michigan State, we never had lights. You know, they'd come in and put those up and be ready to go. So CBS is uh, the least of our worries. You know, we, we just want to make sure that the town understands, that uh, our fans understand, uh, that it's a big deal and show up and uh, present a good picture for the fans and for the the nation out there and to represent the RMAC the way we should. A, uh, a bigger division. Well, again, that's going to be a good test for us, and uh, we're in a situation where, you know, we're going to have uh, probably 35 some odd kids that are going to be here that were not here in the spring. So uh, it's going to be a good test for us. It's going to be a, uh, a test on how quickly we can come together as a football team because there's a lot of guys that are going to be playing that, uh, again, were not there. Uh, so again, we're going to have to rely on these guys. I'm always a believer that you're only as, as good as your seniors. Now, we're not loaded with a bunch of seniors, but we have quality. Uh, so they're going to have to pull it together. We're going to have to pull it together as a staff and, and go to Cal Davis and, and represent and represent the league. So we've got a chance, I think. Uh, you know, it's going to be a long trip, 17 hours, but uh, that's some of the things that you have to do. Now, last year you used a, a couple of starting quarterbacks, uh, some different guys in and out of the lineup. Do you have a better idea heading into season number two who some of those guys will be? Right, and I, I think that's one advantage that we do have, even though uh, we don't have a lot of guys coming back on either side of the ball um, that are going to be uh, in starting roles at least. Uh, you know, we have a quarterback, we have Arthur who's going to be up front, leading that front, but uh, in Jordan Doyle we expect to be our guy at quarterback, and uh, he's the lefty that... Uh, as a sophomore last year, gained a lot of experience, got banged around a little bit, uh, missed a game or two, but uh, we expect him to step in and do a good job. So, again, we're knocking on wood. He stays healthy, and um, we'll be a lot better than we were a year ago. You mentioned Arthur, and uh, he's, he's got a tremendous story for those of you who haven't uh, had a chance to uh, see that yet. Uh, if you Google his name, uh, all sorts of stories pop up from when he was at Michigan State and a cancer survivor. A uh, guy who started a number of years ago, his college experience. What is Arthur being on the team uh, meant for you, Coach? Well, again, it comes back to that, uh, and particularly this year is going to come back to that senior leadership. But to me, it represents, and everybody on that football team, at least in our program, has an understanding of how precious life is and how precious the game is and how few of snaps you might get in your life. And so take advantage of those snaps and make the most of that. Uh, so I think he represents that, that, you know, the will to, to go on, to fight, to overcome the uh, difficulties he has, and yet uh, now he's going to play for love of the game and just getting out there and playing. So I think from that standpoint, uh, you know, he's a, he's a great role model for our players. We have a question from Twitter. Um, after so many improvements, or a lot of improvement from uh, two years ago to last year, what do you see as your, your team goals for this upcoming year? Well, again, I think it covered that. You know, our team goal is to send our, our seniors out as winners. Uh, you know, and we're going to be better, I think, on both sides of the ball. Anytime that your punter is probably your MVP, it's not a good deal. You know, so, uh, and that's kind of the way it was last year. So we'll be a lot better offensively and a lot better defensively, and uh, we just have to show up and play to the very end. And Durango and the approach of the football program. 
Well, <clears throat> excuse me. The last year I played was when 0-10 uh, season. And last year I was fortunate to redshirt. So I, I saw a lot of changes. I saw the competition level elevate. The coaches that guy, uh, the guys that coach brings in is unreal. He's bringing in good people with quality leadership skills. Upon all that, they're athletes and they want to compete. So everybody he brings in is always surrounding us to build a better program. As one of the holdovers from two years ago, what kind of advice do you give give these guys when you tell them horror stories? I mean, zero and ten, it can't get any worse than that, right? It doesn't. It's like a, it's like quicksand. You just keep, you try your best, but you keep sinking. No matter what you try to do, you keep sinking. So it sucked to, to know that you're trying your hardest, and yet you look at the scoreboard, and you're still losing. So now with the people that Coach brought in, the coach, coaching staff that he brings in, the attitude. Thank you, thank you. Arthur, um, as I mentioned, uh, a tremendous story. Uh, you know, you played with Coach Bradley for many years. You started your collegiate experience in 2007. Is it's that right? 2008. 2008. Yeah. Um, lot, you know, most of these guys were probably freshmen, sophomores in high school at that point. I guess my first question for you is, how are you feeling physically? And uh, the cancer being in remission, um, I mean, you, you look pretty strong and fit to me. Oh, I am. I am 100%. I feel fantastic. You know, God is good. Um, it's been a long road for me. I am. Uh, I'm celebrating though. This is. This will be my. Come August. Well, yeah. Come now in a few few weeks. This will be my seventh year of cancer remission. So I'm a cancer survivor, and I'm proud, and I'm. I'm happy, and I'm. I'm in the best shape I've been in my life for the past seven years. So I feel great. At what point did you um, either reach out to Coach Smith or? or have this idea that you could resume playing football after it appeared your, your football career was over? Um, you know what? In my head, it, my football career was never over. Um, in 2007, you know, I accomplished everything I wanted to as a high school athlete. You know, I was, I had over 30 scholarship offers. Um, I was All-American. And, you know, after signing day when I signed with Michigan State, and a few weeks later, I found out I had bone cancer. You know, it was humbling. It was the worst time of my life. And, you know, going through that, dealing with that, dealing with a year of chemo and going through the surgeries and having doctors tell me that, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to walk, let alone play football. You know, it was, it all fueled me. It all, you know, it all sort of gave me that energy that I turned that negative energy into a positive. You know, I just used all of that pain, all of that anger, all of that hurt, and I just used it to build myself back up. And my time at Michigan State was vital. And, you know, everything that I had to go through to get myself in order. You know, I spent two years on crutches. So, you know, I'm, I know I'm crutching around a building. Nobody thinks I was going to play but me. But that's when I knew that I was the only one who needed to think that I could play. And now playing last year was big for me, real big. And now I'm, I couldn't be more excited for this season. Arthur, what, what is it like for you to be out on the field? I imagine you have a different perspective than anybody else on the team. It's it's almost it's spiritual. It's it's crazy. It's like, you know, I every time I step on the field, I don't forget a day that I was in that hospital. You know, I'm, I remember that first day they started chemo, and I was just looking there, and I was like, wow, I just went from, you know, high school athlete, about to go to MSU, do my thing, and, you know, it was all over. And, you know, I, I cherish it. I try, I try to live life day by day, moment by moment, try to attack every day for my goals. And, you know, being out there on the field is, is, is special. It's great. I feel like it represents more than it ever would have had I stayed healthy. I feel like me on the field, you know, I'm, I'm also a representation for every cancer survivor, anybody who's dealing with anything bad in their life that you can overcome and that you can, regardless of the circumstances, that you can you know, have a positive impact and have a positive outlook and still accomplish the things you want. Really enjoy getting back. No, that that's very much the point. I mean, you deal, uh, as we all know, in Division Two, uh, you, you don't have the academic staff that's uh, taking care of your players all the time, so you don't, you know, worry about those things. But now, you're able to sit down, you're able to talk. Hey, you missed class today, or uh, what are you doing in this class? Do you have this? So yeah, you're you're dealing uh, in Division Two is a lot more personal. 
uh, which is good, uh, you know, and, and, and it's a refreshing, it's a breath of fresh air to actually come in and sit down with guys that, like I said, they, these guys are playing the game for the love of the game, as we all are, number one. You know, it's not how quick can you get me to the NFL, coach, you know, so you don't hear all of that. It's uh, more about getting a degree, playing the game for the love of the game, and uh, that's a refreshing part of it.